Hey fellow developers, welcome back after a long, long time. So in this video, we'll learn how one can leverage component composition to write better and faster React code. So without any delay, let's get started with our video. Okay, so let's first see what is component composition. To be honest, this is a very simple concept and I'm damn sure you all have been using this pattern knowingly or unknowingly. So component composition is basically passing a component as a prop to some other components. Yeah, it's that simple. So now. Let's look at an example to visualize the pattern more. So to give you all an example, I have created a very simple button component, which I'm going to import here. Now, if we go to this component, you can see that the component accepts two props, handle click and children. And by the name, I think you already know that handle click is basically a function which will be triggered when the button is clicked. And children is like when we write anything inside of the custom button component, that corresponding text will become the children prop. So here, as you can see, I've imported this and used it like this. So I'm just going to do it this way. Okay. And whatever I write inside of the custom button component, that will become the children prop. So here I'm going to write click me. Right. And you can see that I have a button with click me text inside of it. So this click me is getting passed to this custom button component as the children prop. This is a very common react pattern. And for the handle click prop, I'm just going to pass a very simple callback function, which basically says, hi, fellow developers when clicked. So let's just click here and check. So yes, like I have the message, right? So now coming to what is component composition. So I'm passing this piece of text as the children prop, right? So this, you can assume it to be like a component. So basically we are passing the component to the custom button component and the prop is children. And I know like, uh, you can ask me that, Hey Manish, like this is just a text. This is not a component. So to better visualize, let's do it this way. Okay. So now like I have wrapped this piece of text inside a fragment and let's say now I'm going to add a photo before this text, right? So for that, I'm going to use the react logo, which we have, and you can see that this is an SVG. So to use an SVG inside a react component, we have to import that SVG as a component itself. So to do that, I'm going to do import react component as logo from logo.svg. And now you can use this logo inside here. So now you can see, right, that this button has a logo and a text. So now I think you all can better visualize that this is in fact a component, right? So we are passing this as a component to the custom button component with the help of the children prop. So this is component composition. Now you tell me, haven't you already used this pattern? Yes, right. But now let's learn the concepts in detail so that you can leverage this power at will. Okay, so now what does component composition actually solves? So it solves two of the most common React problems that we all encounter on a daily basis. First is the issue of prop drilling and the second one is the issue of re-renders. So one by one, we'll check how we can use component composition to mitigate both these issues. First, let's see how we can solve the issue of prop drilling using component composition. So in this example, I have a component called welcome page and I'm also passing a prop called username. So this prop is nothing but a random name. In our case, the name is John. So now if we go to the welcome page component, you can see that we get the prop and we are sending it to the welcome message component. Now, again, if we go to the welcome message component, you can see that this is where we actually use the username prop to show some meaningful text, which is like, Hey John, how are you? I hope you're doing good. Right? So if we come back again to the welcome page component, you can visualize that this component has no use of the user name prop apart from sending it to the welcome message component. So this is a classic example of prop drilling. So basically we have three levels of component hierarchy. First is the app on the first level. On the second level, we have the welcome page component, right? And on the third level, we have the welcome message component. Now let's use the power of component composition to streamline the component hierarchy and solve the issue of prop drilling. So the component hierarchy that we currently have is something like this. On the first level, we have our app component. On the second level, we have our welcome page component. And finally, on the third level, we have our welcome message component. 
So our goal should be to transform this component hierarchy into something like this. So here, as you can see, we have our parent app component and the app component has two children, welcome page component and the welcome message component. So by having a component architecture like this, we can solve the issue of prop drilling. Now to achieve this component hierarchy or this architecture, we have to use component composition. So let's see how we can do that. So going back up, what I'm thinking is that what if we can pass the welcome message component directly to this welcome page component itself. So for that, I'm going to use a new prop and let's name it as intro text. And then I'm going to import the welcome message component, right? And if we go back to this component, welcome message, you can see that it accepts the username prop. So instead of passing it to the welcome page component like this, we can pass it directly to the welcome message component, right? So now this welcome page component accepts this intro text prop. So let's go here and let's change this username prop to intro text. And as you can see, this intro text is nothing but a component itself. So what we can do is we can directly call this over here. And this gives us the exact same result. With this, we have solved the issue of prop drilling. Now going back to our app component, do we really think that we have used component composition to solve this issue? Yes, right? Because as you can see, we are passing a component as a prop to a different component, which in our case is welcome page component, right? So we have successfully used component composition to solve the most common or you can say the one of the most common issues in React that we all face, which is prop drilling. Now let's see with an example how we can solve the issue of re-renders using component composition again. Okay, so let's first visualize the issue of re-renders using a very simple example. So as you can see over here, I have something called a scroll progress and below I have a string called some content which is rendering a thousand times. I'm doing this to basically create a very huge scroll bar as you can see. So when I scroll, it shows me the scroll position of the page. So now if we go back to our code, which is here and I'm going to add a line called console.log and inside of it, I'm going to add a string I am rendering. Now if we go back to our browser and open up the console, you can see that as I scroll, this string is constantly getting printed, which indicates what? It indicates that the page is getting constantly re-rendered whenever we scroll, right? So now we will look to fix this issue using component composition. So before actually solving the issue, one thing to keep in mind is that what I mean by re-renders is this piece of component, or you can say the nodes inside of this component is not getting changed when I scroll, right? Which means what? Which means that the actual DOM is not getting changed. What is getting rendered is the virtual DOM. So what is happening is that whenever I scroll, React re-renders this component. And in doing that, it checks the virtual DOM and the actual DOM. And since nothing is getting changed between these two DOMs, the actual DOM is not getting updated. So in reality, the performance impact might not be that high, but yes, it's still getting computed by React. So we are trying to solve or you can say minimize the re-renders which React is performing when we scroll. Okay, so now let's again get back to solving this issue. So now I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to do it on this same file itself just for the sake of demonstration. So let's name this component as scroll progress. And what I'm going to return is basically this HTML element. And let's take all this logic that we've written inside this app component over to our scroll progress component. So now we have two components, which is app and scroll progress. So I said that we're going to solve it using component composition. So now what I will do is I'm going to set a new prop, which is children. And I'm going to show this children over here. Let's do a react fragment. Right? Makes sense. Okay. So now let's use this scroll progress component inside of this app component. Let's delete this unnecessary div. And now if I put this console log 
inside of the app component and scroll the page, you can see that this component is getting rendered just twice, not a thousand times. So now you can ask me, did we actually use component composition to solve the issue of re-render? Yes, right? Because here I have created a component called scroll progress and I've put all the scrolling logic inside of this component itself. And now I'm passing this children prop. So if you remember the first example, which I showed, which is, which was of a custom button. So there, what I did was that whatever we wrapped inside of a component, it becomes the children, right? So similarly in this case also, this piece of code becomes the children prop, which is this. And then I'm using this children prop over here like this. So why does it solve the issue of re-render? To understand this, you first have to know that what causes a re-render in React. So a component re-render happens in React when a component's props change or when its state change. So it can happen in either of these two cases. So in this example, if you see that for our app component, we don't have any state inside of it, right? And if we go to the scroll progress component, you can see that it has only one prop, which is children. And in this case, the children prop is not getting changed. It is constant. So this means that there is no prop change happening. And also there is no state change happening. And because of this, the app component is not getting rendered multiple times as it was happening before. We've extracted all the logic, right? All the logic which was earlier in the app component itself to its own component, which is scroll progress. So now any component which we define here will re-render. But if we use a pattern, something like this, then that re-render won't happen because the prop is not getting changed. So with this, we have solved the issue of re-renders as well using component composition. And also we have come to the end of our video. So if you have learned something valuable, make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends and see you on the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.